on. Mike's on. All right, a little after five on this uh, Tuesday night. Yankees and Mets both in action. I gave you lines one more time for the Mets. Conforto, Frazier, Nimmo, Cabrera, Bruce, Mezzarocco, Dominic Smith at first base, Rosario, and then Wheeler as they're in Atlanta. And the Yankees, Gaudy, Judge Bird, Stanton, D.H., D.D. Hicks, Walker at third for Andrew Haw, Romine catching. Sanchez will get today and tomorrow off. Torres and Sabathia. Sanchez will get today off and tomorrow to kind of clear his head. They also said he's having a little bit of a leg problem, but more than anything, else he's capable to hit tonight, but it is really just kind of get, trying to shake out the slump, which has really bothered him over his last 50 at-bats. He struck out 18 times in his last 50 at-bats, which is a lot. Um, Emmanuel and Bridgewater starts us off. What's up, Emmanuel? Hey, Mike. How are you? Good. What's happening? Not much. So, um, you know, I'm seeing the sports betting going on and being legalized in New Jersey and right. all that. So how long would it be before, you know, the betting is, is legalized or you can bet online? Because I think that's scary. Uh, online for... will be Jersey 30 days. Uh, I think you have to be in the state to be able to wager, though. I don't think you can wager across state lines uh, online. I think if so, if you're in New York, you can't wager in Jersey. You have to be right, in the so state to wager. Thing. That's not a good thing for the racetracks or the casinos either because then there's really not a reason for you to go to the casinos. Well, you know, like everything else, there's, you know, if you're there, you're there. Uh, you know, uh, it depends what they offer, if they offer everything online. But, you know, there is a little bit of an ambiance if you're at the track or sports in the, in the uh, casino or in right. the sports betting emporium. So, like, but you're right. Uh, they want to give everybody access so you can sit in your easy chair and uh, take out your phone and that's make it. a wager. Yes. That's it. Right listen, the that's the you way. may not be thinking about it all day, but you and, know, you're and, sitting there. And-, and that's the way, and that's the way, listen, that's the way it's becoming everything. I mean, you know, that's, that's the reason why racetracks no longer have a lot of people in them. And it's because, you know, in the old days, you had to get up and go to the track. Now you can sit in your living room and they show the races right to, you, right to the minute, right in your house. You know, you don't have to move. Especially in the cold weather. You might, you might want to go out to Monmouth because it's a beautiful track. People go to Saratoga and fill it because it's an event. But, you know, in the middle of August, in the middle of January, if you want to you know, be a guy who wants to bet the races, you can bet them. And not only that, you can bet Gulfstream as well as bet, you know, Big A. But you can also bet Gulfstream. You can bet Fairgrounds. You can bet Santa Anita. You can bet whatever's going on. Allen and Queens, what's up, Allen? Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Welcome back. Thank you. What's up? Uh, my idea of a good bet is that Game 7 of the uh, Western Conference Finals, it started off minus 12 with Golden State favored, and then was minus 6 with Golden State favored. If you bet one way and then bet the other way, you collect both ways, which ended up being a nine-point game. But the beautiful thing about wait, it wait, is wait, 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 what are you talking about? I'm talking about Game 7 of the Finals, where you could have cleaned of what, up what, what, what Finals of what? Uh, the, the Finals of the uh, Basketball. NBA didn't have a f- game seven. What, Western Conference Finals. Western Conference. Well, that's finals. because seven. you had an injured player. Is why the line moved. That's the only reason. I mean, the, the line moved based on an injured player. That's the only, that's the only reason. Normally, lines don't move. They you know they might move a point. They don't move six lines. Never move six points. I mean, only if if, a, if early in the week you had a quarterback in, then a quarterback out. The line might move seven points, but that's it. Bob in uh, North Arlington. What's up, Bob? Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. What's happening? Listen, I'm a young guy. I'm 23. Uh-huh. I want to go back to the traffic for a second. I grew up in Jersey with two parents working in the city my whole life. Right. And it, I think that the traffic issue, so much of it goes back to the, the apps now. Apps are taking over everything. And, the, and I was thinking about it because I grew up in the generation where I'm really the last one that, that grew up a little bit before that. And I got into the age of, you know, you get a cell phone around high school time. There was none of the app stuff. And then it started to take over. You know, I, I went to school. It started to take over. What then, does it have so to I, do with traffic, though? Well, the, the app that everybody's using nowadays is called Waze. Well, I we know people, Waze, but, wait, but, that's, right. I mean, that, but that, that's, that tries to keep people from, from being in traffic, Waze. They try to give you alternate routes. They try to move people in alternate routes from the traffic. I just think there's too much volume more than anything else. And Waze, I know people who, I mean, everyone uses Waze. I mean, I'm not a religious user of it. I know a lot of people who do. It does sometimes give you a shortcut. But you know what? If it's giving everybody the same shortcut, it's not a shortcut anymore. (laughs) You're going to move all the traffic in one way. Ilya in Staten Island, what's up? 
Hey, what's up, Mike? What's happening? Uh, quick thing about the traffic. Uh, American infrastructure was built in, what, the 50s, the 40s? And the population of America back then was half of what it is now, which is 300 million. Well, getting on. Uh, the well, can you give me a number? How many more cars to come in the city today now versus 10 years ago no, or 15 years ago? Up, the population has definitely doubled in the last 60, 70 years. Well, the population of New York State is, is, is actually less than it was uh, 30 years ago. You know that. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm thinking of like the whole country as a whole. There's well, yeah, but you're talking about our, we're talking about our traffic here. We actually have fewer people in the state than we did years ago. Okay, uh, we have the same amount of people, I think, in the city, no more, but we seem to have a lot more traffic. That's the issue. I don't know why. I, I you know, I I I, don't, I think we might have more cars. That might be there might be more cars per household. It might be something like that. I'm not sure, but it seems like, and maybe even fewer people take mass transit. I don't know the reason. I really don't. But traffic has clearly gotten worse. I don't think anybody doesn't think it has. Jim in uh, Connecticut, what's up, Jim? Hey, just one thing, Mike, everybody kind of seems to forget. You know, you look back at 2004, eh, there were some tough economic times. Between then and now, there's been a ton of building uh, throughout the whole Northeast, especially out in Long Island. And, you know, the economy is good. Everybody can afford a, a car of some sort. So a lot of folks driving. It's just that simple. And the roads are old and not getting any better. Well, that's true. So, the roads and bridges, that you know, something has to be done in this country in the next 10 years. It's going to have to be addressed. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be good in terms of putting people to work. And I don't know if it's going to be good in terms of how they're going to fund it. But. They have got to, re, you know, they built this interstate highway system 50 years ago in this country. It has got to be revitalized. The airports, our airports are antiquated. We Look at New York. We have the worst airports. There are places in the world that have the most beautiful airports in the world. Our airports are awful compared to them. Look at our bridges and tunnels. Uh, they're just awful compared to, you know, what you can p be produced in other parts of the world. We have to, without any question, revitalize our infrastructure. That goes without any saying. And that's got to happen. Otherwise, you're going to have massive accidents and stuff. Anthony, and, and just to cry, you know, something, something's going to fall, and that's going to be the end of it. Anthony in uh, Middle Island. What's up, Anthony? Hey, Mike. Welcome back. Thank How you. How are you, buddy? What's happening? Yeah, Mike. I, I, I unfortunately make that drive every day out to East Hampton. The problem is there's only one road in. Oh, one road. Around. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. Are you coming from, home. now, are you talking coming from east to west? I'm coming from west to east. Okay. No, now, my You know my where Shinnecock is, from, right? Well, I, Mike, I actually drive through it because I... Okay, so you know how narrow... You, you know how much... Not the whole road is shut down. Right, you know how that traffic is. So when they... Oh. Where are they sending the traffic when they... Uh, they sending them right down... Is the traffic bottling up right on Sunrise? Right, it, uh, right it, on 27? Is that where it's bottling up right it, there? It's bottling up at exit... It starts at exit 64. Okay. Heading east. Okay. So... I'll give you, for instance, Mike, my drive is about an hour. Yesterday, it took me two hours. Wow. Thursday, I'm, I'm thinking about taking the North Fork and taking the ferries across. That's how bad it is. Wow. I mean, amazing that they can't get that. Now, I don't know where the players are staying, the rank-and-file players. I don't know if they A lot of them are heading, are heading out east, Mike. Tiger Woods is actually... No, Tiger's on a boat. Harbor. He's on the in boat. I know Harbor. that, yeah. Right. I, and I know he's on, I know he's on the job. boat, yeah. and he said he can get there very quickly. So he's got yeah. it okay, yes. Stag Harbor to Shinnecock is a 20-minute ride. Yeah, he said he's fine. But uh, the guys, wherever they're staying in hotels, they're having a lot of problems. And I don't know if they're east or, or west now. There's not a lot of hotels west. So they must be staying east in the hotels. I would guess. I don't know where. I, I don't know exactly where they're staying, but whatever it is, they're having a lot of trouble. That's for sure. Mitch in Huntington. What's up, Mitch? Uh, hey, Mike. How are you? Good. What's happening? Thanks for taking the call. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to talk about what's next for Justify. But before that, on uh -huh. the traffic, yeah. uh, I've been involved in New York City taxi business for over thirty years, and I can tell you that the uh, biggest reason for the increase in traffic is there are a hundred thousand Ubers and Lyfts and so on. Trolling the streets. These so you days. think that's it? And um, you know, one of those cars uh, is the equivalent of um, eight passenger cars because of the amount of uh, of time that they're on the road. So I mean, that's, wow. that's really is that it's really now, uh, now? How traffic. many how many fewer medallions are on the street now? How many? How many? Excuse me. How many fewer medallions are on the street now? Okay, so there are 13,000 medallions licensed, right? but because of uh, what uh, the effect that Uber has had on the industry, there's about 2,000 of them 
that are basically in storage at the TLC because wow. uh, the owners were not able to service their. And debt. does anybody so, does anybody limit the number of Ubers or Lyfts, or they can just have as many as they want? Uh, the city uh, kind of missed the ball on this, and they just let them come. Now they're first trying to uh, put that genie back in the bottle. They're, uh, they're trying to license those guys. To, to, they're trying to maybe. license them. Now, how would you license them through their real, through their license plates? Well, no. What you do is you would limit the number. They they do require a certain yes, a TLC license plate. Right. And what you do is you would limit the number that you issued. And but I mean, they but, it, but they they can right now use regular cars, can't they? Uh, not in the city. Not they, in they the city. Okay. Cars, so they, they have, have to use they, a livery. They need a livery license plate in the city, right? They need a livery plate. But gotcha. There's over a hundred thousand of them. Okay. Uh, it's completely destroyed an industry. And worse than that, I, I can tell you that when. Uh, for many, many years, there were only 11,000-plus medallions, and when the city wanted to issue new ones, uh, there were years of uh, environmental impact studies that had to be performed uh, before they were able to issue just a few thousand new medallions over a period of years. Is there a part of the country where Uber is doing better than, it's, than anywhere else? Is there, does anybody, has anyone done any studies on where they're doing their, their, like making their most money? Well, when you say doing better, they have surpassed yellow in New York in terms of the number of fares that they pick up. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's... They've actually look, surpassed, it, they surpassed the, the medallions in number of, in number of fares? Yes. You know, well, there's 100,000 Uber cars. There's you know, 11,000, 12,000 medallion cabs. So <laughs> just wow. do the math. Wow. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's been a disaster. So if there was a way to somehow limit the number of, uh, of Uber, Lyft, and so on, uh, I think you'd see an immediate positive impact, not only on the traffic, but on the air quality and everything else. Uh, that's why there were limits on medallion cabs in the first place. So it's been, uh, gotcha. it's been so, a real mess. Very interesting. All right. I mean, that maybe that is the issue. I don't know. Maybe that is the reason. Larry in Hillsborough, what's up, Larry? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Francesca? It's What's happening? To speak to you. What's happening? Listen, you're talking about uh, the infrastructure, our bridges, our tunnels, yes. our roads. Yes. It's uh, where is the money going to come from, Mike? That's all. Doesn't over matter. You can't have a bridge. Dollars. When the bridge falls down, they're going to find the money. But but who's going to pay it? They can't put the taxes up. It any, doesn't uh, any matter. Higher. Yes, they will because they you listen. Uh, there's going to be what's going to happen is there's going to be one of these things is going to have a problem. And that's going to set, that's going to end all of it uh, because they have to be revitalized. There's no you can say where's the money going to come from, but they're going to have to find the money and take it out of somewhere else because this system cannot handle not having repairs. It can't handle right. it. Our airports are horrible. Uh, well, that's right? why. And but the airports are horrible and they're inconvenient, but they're not unsafe. The bridges can be unsafe. And as soon as we have a crisis on one of these bridges, that's going to change everybody's thinking. These things have got to be rebuilt. It, they have to be. So you can ask where the money's going to come from. And I understand what you're saying. And it's, it, uh, that's not my job to figure out where it's coming from. But the point is, it's going to have to be done. There's not going to be an if, ands, or a but. As soon as there is one problem, and if you listen to guys, and I happen to know somebody who's in that business, and he tells me all the time, you don't want to know the shape of some of these bridges. And that's a scary thing to hear, is that you don't want to think that some of these bridges need repair. And it's going, and they're going, you know, for, you know, like you look at the work they're doing now on the Tappan Zee as an example. I mean, they're building a new bridge is what they're building. I mean, they are. I mean, they're, 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 that's what they're doing. That's what's the stuff that has to be done. Yeah, I mean, the bridges, that's what I mean. They're in the middle of it. Is it open already or is it not open yet? I don't no, know if it's, it's open already. Oh, it is? You drive on the new bridge That now. new one's now open? Okay, well, last time I was over, that wasn't open yet. So it's now open, but there you go. They, they were able to build that and look at the expanse of that bridge. John in East Islip, what's up, John? Hey, Mike, I don't know about a bridge or an airport, but I know what we do need. What's that? That's the starting picture on yeah, the Yeah, they, they do, but it's not like they're going to die tomorrow if they don't have it. But, I mean, eventually right. they're going to have to get one, yes. Let me give you a, let me give you a scenario now. now mm -hmm. I, I called you a while back. I always kept an eye on him. Even though I'm a Yankee fan, I always thought the guy was lights out. The sleeper trade. The Yankees should go get Matt Harvey from the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, stop. Matt, Mike, stop. put him into the his spotlight last, again. His last four. Check not going to fail. Check out his last four starts. That's all you got to do. 
Just check out his last four starts, see how he's done. did. He has been absolutely pounded. Nick in Westchester, what's up, Nick? Hello? Yeah, Nick, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, so we're talking about uh, the traffic in New York City? Well, and other things, yes, but go ahead. All right, so listen, the Uber cars, that last caller was wrong, okay? There's not 100,000. Are you in Uber the Uber cars. business? No, I'm in the school bus business. So we're, we have bus you know, 200 business. buses in the city every single day. Mm-hmm. All right, so listen, there's 36,000 Uber cars, all right? And they are the problem, you know, and it really has crippled the yellow cab business. Yeah, we know that, know, it, yeah. All right, so yeah. listen, but here's the thing. People don't know that Cuomo and de Blasio are already doing things to try to combat it. So de Blasio, like you were saying before a couple hours ago, has put a restriction on local deliveries on... Well, that's, the, like, that, that's the way to do it. Put, put restrictions on deliveries. That's the common sense thing to do. Don't let people double and triple park and deliver things during the day and, and shut the streets down. Because I see that all the time. You come down a side street in the city and there's a car, it's a park, you have cars parked on both sides and you got somebody making a delivery and they cut the street down. I mean, you can't do that. It's impossible. You, you wonder why it takes an hour to get across town. That, that's one of the reasons. No deliveries during the day. An easy rule. As far as the other stuff, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the problem is in Southampton this week. I know there's people, and they go into a golf tournament, but you got to let the golfers somehow get in there. They can't get in there themselves. So it's a little bit of a problem. Back after this.